to remove the side shift off the pallet, first we need to check that the extension legs are in the correct position here. We can just tip that off the pallet onto the blocks. Uh, so we put the blocks of wood under here, we're aiming to get this reasonably level. It doesn't have to be spot on, but somewhere near it's good. And we'll also remove this top link cylinder for now. And just put that aside for the moment. All right, we're going to install the Y-frame into the uh, side shift. So for the start, we'll get rid of the uh, extension arms. Take off the locking plates. And we need to remove the shear pin out of here. Okay. Install the wire frame onto the side shift frame. And we fit the um, downforce cylinder onto the wire frame using the shear pin. So when we install the cylinders of the wire frame, we need to have the fittings facing out the same side as the, the hoop that the hoses will come through. Now we need to lift the cylinder up and attach the base end of the cylinder to the side shift frame. To be able to move the downforce frame downwards. And we need to remove these lower link pins. And now we're right to back the tractor in and hook up the lower link arms to the side shift. Okay, so I'm just going to wind these arms out to take all the slack out, this sideways slop out. It doesn't need to be tight, just as long as it's not excessively loose. Before we lift the machine off the pallet, we're going to put this extension leg in place. We need to set that down to the lowest hole possible. All right, so now we need to move, remove the digger so as when we lift the machine up, this doesn't hit the ground and get damaged. So we undo the catch, let the digger swing free. Stand it up off the pallet, we need some appropriate lifting gear. Just something that'll handle a thousand kilograms. Sling through the top bow. Support this side of the machine, that'll stop it smashing onto the ground while you're lifting. Now we need to put the digger back onto the machine. lock it back into the carriage. And now the machine's ready to put onto the side shift using the lower link pins. All right, so it's important that we use the bottom hole here in the carry beam to attach it to the side shift frame. Okay, so now we're going to fit the top link cylinder in between these two points. To do that, we need to make the top link cylinder the right length. So if we can take a measurement from the center of the pins, then we need to make the top link cylinder match that length. Okay, so to get the length right, we took a measurement from the tractor, which was 710 millimeters. To get this length right, we then need to take about another 50 mil off that. So we should end up with around about 660 mils. On my tractor this is a little bit too long, so we need to cut some of the thread off so we can achieve the 660 mils that we're looking for. So now we'll fit the top link to the side shift. So 
when you fit this top link cylinder, you need to make sure that this base end is connected to the side shift. We'll just leave the end of the tractor loose for now. So now we're going to hook up the hoses to the various cylinders and also to the tractor so we can get the hydraulics running before we go any further. The hoses are all marked on the end so we know where to run each hose. So we'll have two hoses going to the top link which are marked TLB and TLR. Another two hoses running to the downforce cylinder which will be marked DFR and DFB. And another set of the small hoses which will go to the side shift cylinder. Okay, so we've just brought these hoses down through here. The shorter one of the two which has markings on it, SSB. So SSB will be fitted to the cylinder base. Let's tighten the hoses up so they sit in a nice position. The longer hose, which is marked SSR, will be fitted onto the SSR fitting, which is side shift rod end of the cylinder. Then need to nylon tie the hoses together just to keep them nice and tidy. Keep them up off the ground so they can't get snagged on anything. The next two hoses I'll hook up to the downforce cylinder. So DFB will go to the base end of the downforce cylinder, which is the top fitting. DFR will go down to the bottom. So DFR will go on to the right end of the cylinder. The next two hoses we have for the top wing cylinder. The TLR hose will go to the right end of the cylinder. And the hose mark TLB go to the fitting mark TLB which is on the base end of the cylinder. Yeah, so now we can run the supply and return hoses uh, to the tractor. The supply hose is one at the top of the valve bank which has a label here to say supply. to be certain that we plug that into a supply port on the tractor. The other one then must be the return hose. So it needs to go into a good return port on the tractor. So now we've started the tractor up, got the hydraulics running. We can then operate a top link cylinder fore aft function to hook up the top link on the hose driver. We need to hook that into the second hole from the bottom. Fore aft control. Bleed any air out of the cylinder. So now we're going to hook up the Y frame for the downforce arms onto the lower link arms of the tractor. We can control the cylinder or we can retract the cylinder by using the hammer function. We use the hammer on function, that will retract the cylinder which allows us to get the arms up against the lower control arms on the tractor. We need the arms to come down, normally they'll come down by themselves. If they don't, you may need to stand on the arms, just put a bit of weight on them to, to drop them back down to the ground. We can loosen those bottom nuts enough so this will spin freely. And we install the arms into the white frame. By using that hammer on function, we can pull the Y frame up against these arms. Okay, so we need to get the bolt through the hole that's the lowest to this, just so this takes out any free play. We we'll need to set this Y up as a wide frame.
Okay, once we get this in a nice Y shape, so it's pretty symmetrical in all directions, and then fit the locking plates back under here to stop this Y from closing or opening up. So now we can connect the top link up to the top hole. Very important, it goes into the highest hole possible on the tractor. We can use the hydraulic functions to uh, control the length of this cylinder. So if we use the hammer on function, that will extend the cylinder. If we use the side shift function, that will retract the cylinder. We can take the lifting gear off the top of the machine. Uh, we'll reset these handles into a position that's going to be more comfortable to operate. These handles can be set up in any position that suits you. I prefer to have them in this position so I can use the hammer and auger function with one hand and the two tilt controls with the other hand. Okay, so now I've tied up the hoses together. Just need to tie them in a way that they're not going to rub through on anything, particularly up in this area. Also, if they appear to be putting too much pressure on the couplings here, we can perhaps just put a tie up through this ring just to hold some of the weight, weight of the hose, just to take a bit of pressure off those fittings. So we're just going to do a few final checks now before we um, run the machine. The first thing we'll look at is the extension lead adjustments on the pins. Just make sure that they're in the correct position on the side shift and also on the machine. And we also need to make sure that the lower link pins are in the lowest hole on the carry beam. And now I can start the tractor up uh, get the hydraulics running and then use a function, maybe the fore aft tilt, just to make sure there's oil flowing through the machine. Then need to have a good look around to make sure there's no oil leaks in any of the hose connections that we've made. Uh, the next adjustment we're going to check is the top link adjustment from the side shift to the tractor. We need to start off with the tractor and the post driver being on level ground. We can then operate the side shift function, which will bring this foot up off the ground. You can operate that in either direction, that'll keep the foot up off the ground. To bring the foot back onto the ground, we'll now use the hammer function on. With any further movement of that, should actually try and push the foot down onto the ground. We need to adjust the amount that that lifts off the ground, so as we get a, a good balance between the machine being pushed on the ground, and the machine being lifted off the ground to side shift. We use the side shift function to bring it up to its maximum height. We need around about two or so inches off the ground. So with the adjustment, uh, the foot needs to come down slightly. So we're going to have to extend the uh, top link ram to get that foot to drop down where it should be. If we drop the machine back on the ground, we can take the load off the top link which will allow us to pull the pin out and make the adjustment on the rod end. Uh, to get us to line the hole up again now, we need to retract the cylinder. So we can use the side shift function to do that. So that adjustment is pretty good where we've got it now. Uh, if I happen to make that too long, when we use the hammer function to push this foot into the ground, it would lift the side shift feet off the ground and make them unstable. So you've got to find the happy medium there where the foot's lifting off the ground the right amount. It's not pushing into the ground too far to cause, cause the machine to be unstable. Once you're happy with that adjustment, you then need to tighten the lock nuts off. The 
just make sure that the cylinder can still move freely. And because we're moving the machine out to the left hand side of the tractor, that can also cause a bit of instability with all the weight hanging out that side. To help overcome that, we can adjust this arm to put a bit more downwards pressure on, on this lower link arm. So if we wind that downwards direction, so that's got a bit more load, offsets the load a bit more off to this side. And the next check we're going to make is the downforce cylinder. We need to make sure that this rod is not going to run out of travel in either direction when the machine's lifted up on the lower link arms. And it's a six inch stroke cylinder, so we don't want the rod to come out any more than about five and a half inches. So we've measured the ram of the cylinder. It's came out at 90 mil. Full travel of the ram is 150 mil. So there's no fear of the cylinder topping out. So now we've measured it with the machine down on the ground and you can see there's only 45 mil sticking out. So there's no chance of the ram bottoming out on the cylinder. So that completes the installation process. Before we can move the tractor, we need to put the machine in a position that's, that's safe and stable to transport the machine on the back of the tractor. So we'll side shift the machine back in towards the centre. We'll also use the fore aft tilt to bring the machine as far back as possible. And we can also side tilt the machine towards the tractor 